Hey there and welcome back to my channel. We are talking all about overtiredness and today we're going to be looking at solving that problem. If your child is overtired, then stick around because you want to hear the solutions to that problem. All right, so last time we looked at how to spot where the overtiredness is coming from. If you missed that episode, then I encourage you to go and check it out because you need to know where the overtiredness is coming from before you can start looking at ways to fix it. Otherwise, you might be fixing the wrong thing. But today, we, we, once we've spotted it, we've got it. So now we can fix it. How do we get our little ones to sleep more? Right. First of all, we know where it's coming from, okay? Spot where it's coming from. And then I want you to consider a couple of things. Is it the timing or the routine around that sleep happening because that could be everything for instance if you're trying to get your toddler to nap um, take their daytime nap um, after 1 p.m and they're really really struggling if you actually manage to get them down for that nap somewhere between 12 30 and 1 you might find they go down really easily and it could just be as simple as timing and that nothing else is wrong about it it's just the timing isn't good it's that you maybe you're trying too soon and they're not tired enough or you're trying too late and they've gone past it they're overtired they're into a second wind which gives them a sense of adrenaline and then they they can't fall to sleep so is it timing um i i remember this happening with my daughter actually and exactly that with the toddler timing for the the middle of the day nap if it was after 1 p.m no chance it was like i'd look i'd i'd blown it the opportunity was between 12 30 and 1 and if if i tried too soon she wouldn't be ready if it was after one uh oh it's gonna be a battle um but if i got that sweet spot oh blissful i could put her down she'd lie down she'd have a wonderful nap and all would be great so timing check that one out are you trying at the wrong time um, and also the routine leading into that sleep so are you just trying to take your child from heavy stimulation and lots going on into right go to sleep now like there's a tall order so are there steps that you're missing or that you could try to uh, set the scene a bit like a bedtime routine to set the scene and to help to just bring them down a bit de-stimulate them because really from especially around from eight to ten months onwards they're they're very receptive of outside stimuli so is there anything you can do to bring them away from the busyness of the day and into a calmer and chilled environment that's conducive to good sleep it could be that they're going to their room that's darkened as shades are down um if you have a particular you know a particular tune that you play or a story that you read make it a bit like the bedtime setup so that all the triggers to the brain are sleep time now it's sleep time now and, and it's helping them to prepare the brain will start to release the sleepy hormones if if the signals are given to it um, so routine around the sleep so timing and routine um, is one part of it the other part completely to this that it could be because maybe you're like yep 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 all of that spot on okay so the other part then could be that you're battling to get your little one to settle because of lack of skill to settle um, or too much stimulation so if your attempts to get your little one to settle are too involved and you're for want of a better word like fussing too much or you know trying too hard and doing all the things to try to calm and soothe your little one and sometimes you know it involves putting on a flan show and song and you know all the things that parents do we do anything to get our kids to sleep wouldn't we um it might be too stimulating, it might be too much. So consider your role in the process, but also consider your little ones settling in the process because if, and this is the classic mistake, if you are waiting, which means you've probably not got the right timing, for your little one to be so tired that they just conk out, well, sometimes that doesn't happen because they, they're overtired. The conk out tends to happen even after the overtiredness. So we're tired, we can settle. We're overtired, we're gonna fight it. We're so tired, we're past overtired, then we might crash and burn. <laughs> and if they do, if they zonk out because they are that exhausted, then they are unaware of that falling to sleep. And there's a good chance that won't be a great quality of sleep anyway. It, it may be, that may be a catch up, but it's not sustainable. You can't rely upon that method every single day um, without living in a constant state of overtiredness with your little one. 
And so the key to that is finding the ideal timing and sure, they might not be so tired, but that means they, they are lacking in the skill for falling to sleep and that's okay. You can help them with it. So you're not expecting them to just figure it out and magically know how but you can help them with it. And I have tons of videos on here um, to, to guide you in how to help them to develop healthy and happy skills to just blissfully settle to sleep quite happily and peacefully with your help and your assistance, but without you just doing the job for them, which is what zonking out is. Um, so they're not learning or developing anything there. Okay, so once you have identified these things, um, these are the ways you can fix it. So once you know which ch way you're going to go about fixing it, you need to do, put that into a plan. Make sure you and anyone else who's looking after a little one knows the plan so that you can be consistent with it. And I cannot emphasize enough how that consistency is absolutely vital. It's the difference between success and failure in reaching the goal that you want to reach. And if you wanna reach that goal, it needs to be implemented completely consistently by whoever is helping your little one to settle better. And once they do, they're gonna get the sleep they need and all the other repercussions of overtiredness will start to fade away and it will be so much um, of a happier and healthier life for your whole family. I hope this has been helpful. Coming up in my next episode, I'm going to be sharing uh, the specifics around babies with nap extensions. So if you're struggling with those short little cat naps, um, I'm going to tell you how you can work on improving those um, when the time is right for your little ones. So I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. In the meantime, if you need any additional help, reach out to us at The Sleep Nanny and definitely be sure to check the link to an amazing resource that's gonna help you today with your family sleep. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.